and welcome to Viewpoint. My name is Tamara Rosavan. Russian President Vladimir Putin has ordered to withdraw most of his country's forces out of Syria starting March 15th. This follows the start of fresh peace talks in Geneva aimed at ending the five-year war in Syria. Joining us to discuss the recent events concerning Syria is Colonel Glenn Grant, strategy lecturer at Riga Business School in Latvia. Welcome to Viewpoint. Welcome. Thank you. So, why is Putin withdrawing forces, most of Russian forces, out of Syria at this point? Uh, I think you've got to see um, his Syria operation in the wider game. I don't think you can actually look at it just as uh, Syria. Um, I mean, he's got, he had two or three reasons for going there. One was to distract attention from what was going on elsewhere. Eastern uh, Ukraine. Eastern Ukraine, and, and that was successful. That was extremely successful. Um, secondly, to, uh, to, I think, boost the, the refugee problem and put pressure on Turkey uh, with refugees, which he's done successfully. I mean, there are now three million refugees in Turkey. I mean, that is a terrible... Now. I mean, refugees all over the place, Lebanon and, and, and elsewhere. So he was very successful with that. Um, and I think also, I think part, a, a main aim was actually to, to train... Uh, his air forces and army better for doing something else. And now uh, the inevitable question is, what is something else? And I don't know, and I don't think anybody knows. But could it, could it be potentially to continue uh, pouring um, experienced troops who've been in Syria into eastern Ukraine yes, to fight course, against yes, the government forces? I mean, he, he's, 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 been, he's been pouring into Ukraine uh, weapons, ammunition... And, and, and other people solidly now for, for the last year. Um, I mean, there are now more tanks in, in, in eastern Ukraine than Britain, Germany and Poland have got altogether. So, you know, I mean, he's not doing that for fresh air. It costs a lot of money to move tanks on trains. So he's doing that because he's going to do something else. But the question is whether he's ready to do something else now or are we looking at... At August, are we looking at sort of you know election time in other countries when when people are distracted, when maybe Merkel is distracted, or or even Merkel is not there? Um, so so the timing of when, what he does in Ukraine uh, is 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 open to question, and he may just keep this his current thing going in Ukraine for a long a lot longer because there's a drip 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 punishment on the Ukrainian defence forces. That is going on at the moment, you know, a, de a death a day, effectively, or more, uh, and, and that's not good for, for morale. If you're just sitting there and you're waiting for someone to mortar you or shell you, or worse, multi-barrel rocket launcher you, um, day after day after day. So basically, Putin uh, pulling back forces out of Syria is increasing um, uh, manpower and weapon power uh, in eastern Ukraine. Not in eastern Ukraine for something else, for something else. It may be in eastern Ukraine. I mean, because they're now ready and better to go into eastern Ukraine. And, uh, and it's only the manpower. I mean, he's got a shortage of high-quality trained manpower, but he's now got another however many battalions that he ha hadn't before who are trained. But the air forces, that's the thing. He's trained the air forces because he wasn't training those in East Ukraine because there were no aircraft flying. So now the air forces have actually had their combat training. He's also trained the navy, because they've been do they've been doing uh, down there. They've been uh, much much more uh, group team training uh, in squadrons than they were doing before, and they've been training their logistics, their ability to to move logistics. So from a post Syria, he is now in much much stronger position than he ever was before going to Syria in terms of a military ability for military adventurism. So, I see. So why would he bother with East Ukraine for the moment? Because it's, it's actually just going along nicely. And, I see. And so he's keeping it uh, a frozen conflict, uh, so to speak. And, and while he's pulling back these, uh, his, most of his forms, uh, forces out of Syria, is he confident that Assad will keep the, mm, the, the, the land that Russian forces um, grabbed for him, basically, in, under his control? But he doesn't need any of that. He doesn't need the land. That's, I mean, there's two things there. He doesn't need the land. He needs the port. The land, the land is, as long as the port's there, and I think the port is fairly secure, then he's OK in that, that area. So he's, and he's got what he wants there, and maybe, maybe the, 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 the payback is oil or something else for, for fighting down there. I don't think he cares about Assad either. I think he'd give up Assad. What he cares about is that power 
governmental power is the concept that remains. In other words, not, not people power, but government power, because that's the, that's the logic set that he has, which is that the government, that the power group, the power central, uh, is the most important thing, and people are under that, which is what he has in, which is what he has in, in Russia, and which is what he's terrified about uh, breaking in, in Ukraine. I mean, it, that, that he does not want people power, because if it's people power in Ukraine, it will spread into Russia. And then his whole concept, right, his whole regime, his whole regime is going to be under under That's under right. question. That's right. Right, but um, uh, going back to Syria, um, does this mean that um, Putin is uh, p potentially confident in uh, what he achieved in in Syria now that he's pulling back uh, weapons? It, does he feel that Russia's uh, military foothold in the Middle East is fairly strong now? Um, again, I don't think that matters. Uh, and I don't think it matters because, because in, in terms of the, the, the longer game, it's, it's what he does next that actually matters. I mean, he doesn't really need to keep Syria. Syria is there. Syria is bubbling. There's still all the refugees are going into the EU. He's actually caused a huge amount of, of tension inside the European Union. That's what he wants. That's what he wants. He's done that. And, and staying there is not going to make that any worse. It's bad now. He's already got the tension, and you've already got, you know, countries, Romania and Hungary and, and Czechoslovakia, sorry, Czechoslovakia, Czech Republic, um, sort of saying we're not going to take refugees and things like this. So the tension inside the European Union is there. He's achieved that aim. Staying there is not going to achieve much, much, much else of an aim and may cause him more problems with other Middle Eastern countries if he stays there and ends up embroiled in a fight with, with Saudi Arabia or something. Now, he doesn't want that because that's going to eat money, that's going to eat uh, soldiers for no reason whatsoever. So pulling back, is, is a, it's a good timely move for him. He, he, keeps his, he keeps his treasure, trained soldiers, trained aircraft. He hasn't used too much of his money on, on, on bombing. And, but if he stays there, he's going to eat his resources for no further gain. So he might as well pull back, and then he's ready to do something else. And he puts Europe, the Baltic states, and other people under pressure, and maybe even some areas of the Middle East under pressure, because they don't know what he's going to do next. But what is clear is he will do something next. Hybrid warfare, he may now sit for six months. I see. I see, but... But with his military intervention in Syria, Russia has earned its position or carved its position at the peace negotiations now going on yes. in, in so Geneva. He's, so he's got his treasure. He's got what he wants, which is the, the, this, you know, keep, keep Russia in the public eye, uh, give Russia credibility, Russia importance. I mean, he's got Putin even to sort of suggest that, that Ukraine is a, a, a client state of, of Russia uh, last week. Uh, sorry, Obama saying, you know, that, that, that. And that, that's, a, that's a, a significant, significant uh, geopolitical step to get these things. So he's got a lot from going to Syria. I see. So what is his ultimate goal then? I don't know. Do you? No. No, I don't think anybody does. I mean, he's clearly after he's clearly after this sort of you know expansion, not expansionism in terms of necessarily land, but expanding the uh, expanding the power and position of Russia in the world. And he's doing that quite successfully. He's doing it very successfully by by unsettling everything else around him, and that unsettling is is a just just unsettling. Now, by the threat, I mean, he's unset he unsettles Ukraine by the threat of doing something in Donbass, not necessarily the actual doing. It's the threat of coming uh, of a land bridge to Crimea. It's the threat of using Crimea and putting uh, nuclear weapons on Crimea. It's the threat to, 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 to Romania, who are in range. It's the threat to Bulgaria, who are in range, and Georgia, who are in range. The Baltics. It, and, and it's the threat to the Baltics as well. Yeah. And, and so it's those constant threats, the unsettling, is, 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 is giving him power by unsettling. And nobody stops him. And that's the problem in a way. So I think he will just keep going. He'll keep unsettling an area, another area, another area. Now, you know, what, where, where will he unsettle next? I don't know. But he will. Because and you're sure of that? I'm sure of it because he's, he, you can't... You can't spend huge amounts of money, logistics, moving your 
Siberian troops all the way across to the west of, of Russia for nothing. It costs too much money. Why would you do that? Why would you open up a gap on the Chinese side of the country and move your troops to the west if you're not going to use them? All right, you can say it's an exercise and you move them back again. But it costs huge amounts of money. Why do you do an exercise in the Arctic using 60,000 troops, which costs a huge amount of money and ships and planes, if you're not intending to do something with that in the future? So he's slowly preparing... For something. Russia's military. Correct. I see very interesting discussion today. Thank you so much for joining me in the studio. Not at all. Thank you very much. This has been Colonel Glenn Grant, strategy lecturer at Riga Business School in Latvia. You've been watching Viewpoint on Ukraine today.